if you have a weak heart in being rejected, mm -hmm. then art's not the business for you. It's not a little, it's not a tango, it's not a small dance that lasts a few minutes. Mm -hmm. It's a marathon. Whenever you go to a place and you're there for a few years absorbing the culture, you can't um, not be influenced about that experience. And that's kind of what my work is about, this translation of that experience. Sometimes you don't absorb or best digest this experience until a few years afterwards. So going to Mongolia, living with nomads, I don't know what it's, I can't best describe it until a year or two afterwards when I best, when I've had enough distance from it. I think the best, um, understanding of data and truth can be seen from an outsider rather than someone who's so involved in that information. It was literally like, uh, you come in, do what you want, mm -hmm. and when, the prof when you feel that you're finished, the professor would come in and be like, maybe you should take out something, maybe you shouldn't, mm -hmm. and that's it. Do you have any like tutor who influenced you more than others? I would say overall the diverse opinions of how to approach just work and video work has been very helpful. They just opened up my eyes on different things. I was very kind of uneducated with some of the video artists before I came and now I feel pretty comfortable. And what is the most extreme opinion you get that, that could change your perception as well? Um, might be, not be an opinion, it just might be like a piece of advice. The fragility of things are something that I, I'm always kind of never been very, I've been more about interested about sensitivity rather than fragility. Just use it. So this idea that uh, consciousness in human beings and how they can cognitively see things is really interesting for me. Um, and for me the, the bigger issues of how people are defined and which language they're willing to take on in order to tell their story is more interesting than how they will define themselves. So pluralistic histories and social constructed realities, those, those focuses I've looked on, for, especially for the show. question of if, they, if they're willing to engage with any piece of art, hopefully with their mind, they actually walk away with a different sense of reality, a different skew of what things are. And that, in essence, their vision is maybe not the clearest vision. There's someone else's vision may be just as good, or their vision's actually very skewed. But if you're putting it in a different kind of reality or sensibility, then, then it changes. What's interesting is the fact that every, everybody understands differently. It can be the same sentence, but everybody understands that sentence in a very different way due to the experiences and the asymmetry of knowledge that people have, right? There's people who have lots of knowledge and are able to share that on a very elementary level, and there's other people who are just have so much knowledge, but they can't share it. So is, where is that knowledge? It's a, they call it cascade of information. This kind of thing. Uh, and I think there's this idea within Kafka even settings, like you, know, you don't understand how bad the English language is until you learn another language better than the English language. Yeah, and in early 20s, Yes, beautiful. Uh, it was actually a show dealing with being, feeling as, I guess not, dealing as an immigrant living in a, another society. And Simon Murat actually organized the show, Austrian Cultural Forum, and it was in the Science Center in uh, Nizhny Novgorod. It was a really beautiful place, and there was a group of artists showing 
how it felt to feel like a foreigner in a in an, in a place where it's has this rich history of you know, meetings. Um, and in Moscow? Moscow is a smaller group show, and I was just showing another smaller work. And, uh, but how it happened? Like, uh, it just happened. I had no idea. <laughs> like, it's one of those things where so, you're in the right place at the right time. And I was really, I've been lucky a few times where it's been, you just put yourself out there and you make your own luck. And how did you I liked it. It was a bit, um, a bit, it felt a bit like radical in some areas, very academic in other areas, um, and the contemporary gallery scene is still almost like, you know, the 80s in New York, very, uh, very much in the kind of like wanting to be raw and new stages, but at the same time, there's this old structure that's been around for a while and they need to deal with that as well. Each community has a very different um, stance on where they're taking. Uh, I think in, in Russia, they have different manifestos for different groups. Um, in the US, it's kind of based on like a demographic or neighborhood or um, conceptual ideas that over, you know, overlay maybe three or four artists, but each time it's always something very different to look at, and I really like that aspect of this again pluralistic idea of telling a story and how Faulkner would even be willing to do it in Sound of Fury, where one story is told in like four different perspectives. What do you think to do next? What is your plan? No idea. No idea. It's an exciting time. <laughs> Whatever art brings me, I'll go.